A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Come on, Silver! Every 4th of July, ranchers for miles around gathered at the V3 spread in Harper's Valley. The whole day was spent celebrating in the boisterous, carefree manner of the West with a plentiful supply of food and drink provided by Silas Harper, owner of the V3. Silas, gruff, hearty, and smiling, stood watching the merriment surrounded by a group of friends. Well, Silas, it's sure been a big day. Most everybody in town's out here having a time along with the ranchers. Yeah, it's a right smart crowd, Chief. That's what I like to see when they have my 4th of July party. Hi, Silas. Party celebration you got here. Howdy, Pierce. Glad you come out. <laughs> What's that sharp-eyed lizard doing out here at the V3? Well, I don't like Jed Pierce any more than you do, Jim. But even lizards is working to the V3 on the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I guess so, Silas. <laughs> uh, say, uh, how you doing with your prize stock of horses? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, purchasing agent for the Army will be going through this territory in about three weeks. My horses will bring a good prize. Yeah, sure know how to raise them. <laughs> yep, do a better job raising my horses than I do my boy Tom. Now, where's that kid of yours today? I haven't laid eyes on him. Seems to me for a boy 18 years old, he ought to be out here yowling with the rest of them. <laughs> yes, that's right. Hey, Jim, where is Tom? Have you seen him around? Well, uh, I did see Tom this morning, Mr. Hopper. Where? Over at the corral. Now, listen here, Jim. As foreman of this spread, I don't expect you to be a nursemaid, my son. But if you let him ride off again with that dad ratted paint and stuff Tom his, ain't I... a kid anymore, Mr. Harper. He doesn't pay any mind to what I say. Then he did go riding off, is that it? Yep, I guess he did. With all that, that paint and stuff? Tom calls himself an artist. He says they all use that sort of stuff. Yet he didn't listen to what I call him and lay eyes on him. Well, I guess your Tom's just a bit different from the rest of us, Silas. But maybe he'll get over it. No, maybe about it. You'll get over it fast when I meet up with him. Excuse me, Sheriff. I'm going to speak to the missus about Tom right now. She's on the porch with Sally Harris, Mr. Harper. Yes, thanks, thanks. Howdy, party, party. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Billy, that no good son of yours is going traipsing off to do some more of that crazy peat of his. And on it be like this. Now, Silas, calm down. Remember, we got Calm company. down, you say. 
Mother, and he can poop of his son doing that sort of stuff. Silas, you haven't even spoken to Sally yet. Good afternoon, Mr. Harper. Howdy, Sally. How like it was saying, Mary? I wouldn't worry about Tommy, Mr. Harper. Yeah. Someday he'll be a great artist. He does wonderfully lifelike painting. I won't have any son of mine being an artist. He's making me the laughing stock of the whole kid, toy. Tom said this morning that he'd like to climb up to Crag Rock and so to get a good view of Stony Mountain, being such a nice day and all. Going up to Crag Rock, eh? Well, I'm riding up here right now. When I get there, I'll bust all that stuff he carries around once and for all. Silas, there's no I'll use. teach that weak knee whipper a few days. Oh, poor Tom. He was only a bit more like the other rancher's son. Tommy's all right, Mrs. Harper. He's fine. Well, he's the sensitive type. He's a born painter. I know. But Silas would never understand. You like my boy, don't you, Sally? Yes, I do. And I think it's a shame his father won't give him a chance. I'm going to ride up to Crag Rock ahead of Mr. Harper and warn Tommy right now. Some distance from the B3 ranch house, Stony Mountain formed a cliff-like wall on the west side of Harper Valley, the only entrances to which were fairly narrow passes at either end where the rolling hills from the east curved to meet the rigid Stony Mountain range. All the trails from the V3 spread led to the main trail along the bottom of the valley, along which the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Tonto were riding. Our friend Silas Harper has about the choicest spot in this territory, Tonto. Ah, him have whole valley to sell. That's right. With guards at each pass, he could practically close himself in. Ah. What's that to the east, over there? Oh, that... Crack rock, Kimasabi. Yes, I know that. It looks to me as though something's moving on top of it. Crack rock, plenty high. Pointed. No one ever go up there. Oh, Silver, oh, 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 Scott, oh, steady, man. Oh, Wait. Oh, fella. Now look again. Ah, you're right. Me see man up on Crack rock. He's starting to leave and go down. Ah. It's dangerous. He might slip and fall. Be right over to the base of Crag rock and meet him. Go on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Him leave horse over there, Kimasabi. Yes. Look, Tonto, it's coming down. Hmm. Looks like Tom Harper, son of our friends Silas and Mary Harper. You met Tom last time we stopped by the V3 ranch. Oh, him boy who paint picture. Yes. He sees us now. It is Tom Harper. Hi. Glad to see you. Hi, Tom. Oh, it's as hard to come down from as it is to climb. Oh, why you go up there, Tom? Well, I, I wanted to paint a picture of the center part of Stony Mountain. Up there is the only place where a person can see the base of the cliff. Mind if I look at the painting, Tom? No, sir. Here it is under my arm. Thanks. Here, let me help you set the easel and other canvases down for a moment. All right, thanks. Sure. Yeah. Well, what do you think of it? Well, Tom, in my opinion, you're a real artist. Look here, Tonto. Ah, that looked like real Stony Mountain. That good, Tom. You must have been here all day, Tom. You caught the bright sunlight on the face of the cliff. I have been, sir. And Dad won't like it if he finds out that I sneaked away from the Fourth of July celebration. Me hear your father say, him not like it when you paint. I know. When I went away to school, I took a part. They said I had a natural talent. You have, Tom. Yeah, but Dad wants a son who can shoot and rope and all that. I guess I'm a big disappointment to him, but I... Akima Sabi, someone come right fast. Coming from the direction of the ranch house. Well, look, it's Sally, Sally Harris. All right, we'll leave. No, no, please, wait. Oh, oh, there, oh, boy. Oh, Tom, I... A masked man. It's all right, Sally. These are friends of mine. Mom and Dad know them, too. Oh, I'm glad to meet you both. I'm Sally Harris. Steady, boy. I'm glad to meet you, Sally. How? Tom, I came to tell you your father's coming. He's going to destroy your easel and pictures. Oh, Silas Harper wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, he would. You don't know Dad when he's riled up, especially about my painting. Him come now, maybe. Oh, Tom, what do you do? Maybe I can persuade him not to be too hard. Go there, go! Go there, go! Hi, Dad. Hello, Silas. Well, I didn't expect to find you and Tonto here. Good evening. How? 
Jelly, what are you doing here? I left you back in the porch. I came here to tell Tom what you said you were going to do, Mr. Harper. Good, and he already knows. Oh, you young whelp. What do you mean, sneaking off to devil with them messy paints? And the other young fellas are celebrating like real men. But, Dad... Don't but dad me! I'll bust all that stuff to smithereens right now. And if I ever catch you fooling with painting again, I'll turn you out once and for all. Oh, wait a minute, Silas. <laughs> well? Calm down a little. Don't do anything you'll be sorry for. Let Tom keep his things. Maybe someday you'll change your mind. But for now, I'm sure Tom will promise not to use them again. Yeah, but Well, I'll... you heard what the mash man said. Well, all right. I promise, Dad. At least I know you don't lie to me. I'm sure you can keep it. But keep it out of sight. And don't ever use it again. I'll gather up that junk and let's get back to the ranch. <laughs> following day, the man known as Jed Pierce sat at a corner table in a cafe of the nearby town. He was in low and earnest conversation with a dark-complected man whom he addressed as Don. Glad you got here, Don. I got your message in Benton and came right over here. What's the big deal? Knowing you used to be a play actor, I decided to let you in on something that'll be worthwhile. Remember the hombre that hung around Benton a while? One with his spectacles. And... Oh, you mean the geologist from St. Louis? Yeah, that's the one. Could you make out like you were a geologist? Fix yourself up to look the part? Hmm. Sure could. It was worth my while. You always make out pretty good when we pull deals together, don't you? I guess I'd do with that. Well, then take my word for it. What we have to do first is this. We're going to build a cabin as quick as we can. And move you into it, fixed up like a geologist. Just play the part when anybody comes snooping. Look, when I was in St. Louis, I never went in on a deal unless I knew all the details. I'll tell you all about it later, not here. I get to the hotel and fix yourself up like I said. This afternoon, I'll take you out and show you where we'll put up the cabin. We'll bring the stuff in from Benton. Within a month, we'll both have plenty of gold sold away. How about it, huh? All right. We'll drink on it. It's a deal. Two weeks later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up before the B-3 ranch house. Oh, Silver, how about oh, 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 Silas oh, Harper oh. and his wife, Mary, were on the porch enjoying the sunset. Hey, hey, hey. come up and sit a while. Hi. Big fella. We can stay only a few minutes, Silas. Ah, it'll soon be dark. Oh, I declare you always give me a start when you ride up. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see you again, both of you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Harper. We expect to be leaving this territory before long, so we took this opportunity to stop in and say goodbye. Well, sit down and sit down. Thanks. You never stay put one place very long, do you? Not too long, Silas. Oh, uh, how's Tom getting on? Poor Tom. He just don't know what to do with himself, so he does try hard to help out on the ranch. Yes. Well, he's as much help as a fish out of water. Can't see why I couldn't have a boyhood amount or something. I'm sure you'll be proud of Tom someday, Silas. Hope I live to see the day. Silas, you mustn't talk like that about our boy. If you try to see things his way and let him do... Well, here comes Jim. Something's wrong. Oh, there. Oh, boy. Steady. Well, what's wrong, Jim? Mr. Harper, I just thought I'd... Oh, Oh, you've seen these two here before, so don't get excited. Tell me what's happened. Mercy me, Jim. You're all out of breath. Yes, sir. Mr. Harper... We've just been checking up, and I come with bad news for you. What's the bad news? Speak up, man. I hate to tell you, but 20 of the finest horses out of the prize herd have been stolen. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When Jim, the foreman of the V3 Ranch, brought the news that 20 of Silas Harper's finest prize horses had been stolen, Silas sprang to his feet in a rage. Jim, you're playing funny with it's me. It's the truth, uh... Mr. Harper. Night before last, one of the boys riding the North Range told me it looked like to him a few was missing. And this morning, he come in and said he was sure more was gone. So I got the boys together and found out 20 was gone. That's quite a loss, Silas. Ah, that plenty horse to lose. What do you want me to do, Mr. Harper? Change somebody to tell the sheriff. They camp some of the boys out near the north and south passage. The rest of the hands can go with the sheriff to see if he can trail the thieving coyotes. Right. But as for trailing them, we tried to pick up their trail, but I guess by running a few off at a time like they did, there ain't much of a trail to follow. The fact is, we couldn't cut any sign on them at all. Get the sheriff anyway. Get the hands camped out like a shed. We'll make sure if them rustlers are still in the valley, they won't get out. Can't keep people from using the main trail. But you can make certain none of them drive my horses out with him. Get going and hurry. Yes, sir. It's awful, Silas. Some of your best prize yeah. horses. Are all the horses branded, Silas? Yep. Every one of them is carrying the V3 brand. Maybe some of them will show up somewhere. That's no help now. Uh, I sure wish you and Tonto wasn't leaving. We're not. You see, you're not? That's right. We're staying on until those rustlers are caught. Oh, I'm so oh, glad. That's mighty fine of you, my friend. Well, we'll leave now. It's getting too dark to try to cut sign. We'll be back at daybreak. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. Right there, big fella. Adios. Good day to you. See you in the morning. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scow. Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to Harper Valley. When they were only a short distance inside the valley beyond the South Pass, they saw a horseman racing toward them. There comes Jim, Silas Harper's foreman. Ah, him and heap a big hurry. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 there. Oh, 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 steady there. Morning, Jim. Oh, morning, stranger. Well, things are sure popping. Mr. Harper's matter in a wet hen. Well, what's happened now? Five more prize horses missing. I'm going to get the sheriff again. I don't understand. How could rustlers get them out? Aren't the ranch hands guarding both passes? That's right, they are. And nobody went out of the valley with them horses through either pass. Then they must still be in the valley. Well, there's another way out. There ain't any other way out, stranger. The boss is scouring the valley with some of the men right now. I better be going to get the sheriff. Come on, boy. Get up! Well, it's plenty strange. More horse gone, Kimasabi. Yes, it is, Toto. We're right along the base of the cliffs from here to the other end. Come, Silver. Come on, boy. Get him up, scout. You think maybe we find something? I don't know, Toto. The base of the cliffs is not visible from the trail. In fact, that ridge of shale and scrub pine prevent it from being seen from any part of the valley. Easy, Silver. Careful, boy. Oh, Easy shale. now. Shale's not good to ride over. Probably hard rock at the base of the cliffs. It won't be so bad. If there's any cleft or cave along there, we'll find it before we're through. After riding over the small ridge of shale and scrub pine, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached a hard rock surface which extended along the sheer walls of Rocky Mountain. Riding slowly, they rode toward the north end, keeping close watch for any opening that might be concealed by scrub pines or bushes. Look ahead there, Tonto. A cabin. Ah. It's been built close against the wall of the cliff, almost opposite Craig Rock. Me not no cabin there, Kimasabi. No, neither did I. Can't be seen from the trail below. We'll stop and investigate, Hoso. Oh, 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 right there, big fella. Come on, fella. Uh, uh. Well, it looked like someone lived here. Yes, this strip between the cliff and the trail is unclaimed land. But I... Yes, what can I do? Why, you're wearing a mask. Now, don't worry. This is a friendly visit. Oh, uh, would you mind answering a few questions? No, of course not. Come in. Well, thanks. A comfortable place you have here, Mr... Uh... Professor Robbins. I'm a geologist from Boston. Oh, I see. The Indian rugs you have on the floor and walls are very effective, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? The floor of this cabin is the natural rock, so I... it needed a covering. I see. 
Have you been here long, Professor? About a month or six weeks, I should say. Uh-huh. I came here to study the rock formations. I had this cabin put up here because it's not visible from the trail. And I have complete privacy. Of course. I uh, didn't notice a corral or a horse, Professor. How do you leave the valley to get supplies? I made arrangements to have supplies brought to me frequently. And when I'm ready to move on, I'll have a vehicle brought here to take me out. Oh, I see. Well, uh, sorry to have bothered you. We'll be going along. You see, the V3 Ranch has lost some horses and we're aiding in the search. Come along, Toto. <laughs> Thanks, I see you, Mrs. Harper. Said a big fellow. <laughs> Is Tom here? Yes, I've called him. Tom! Oh, Tom! He's here right away, Mom. Oh, I'm doing the best. I just look some worn out worrying about those horses. Oh, 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 oh. Well, hi there. Morning, Silas. <laughs> Call me, Mom. Yes, Tom. Um... I want to see you, Tom. You still have the painting you made on Crag Rock, the 4th of July? Uh, what's that I heard you say about a painting? Seems to me... Oh, wait, Silas, only... wait a minute. This is important. How about it, Tom? Yes, I kept it. I'll get it for you. I can't for the life of me figure why you, you want it. You soon know. Any sign of the rustler, Silas? Not a bit. Something mighty funny about the whole thing. They couldn't just fly them horses away from the valley. I know. Did you see that cabin built at the base of Stony Mountain? Yep, the first time I knew it was there. Been there some time, I reckon. That strip is unclaimed land. So it's all right for it to be there. Yeah, here's the painting. Well, thanks, Tom. Hmm. Look here, Silas. I don't want to look at any of Tom's foolish dabbling. This is all. Look at it, Silas. Yeah, well, all right. But I have to... Gee. That's the cliff right opposite Crag Rock. Looks just like it, too. Yes. Tom's detail work is perfect. This was painted a little over two weeks ago. But there's something missing in it. Oh, no, that's just as I saw it. I but the cabin it. is not there. Uh, Jupiter, that's right. The cabin we saw this morning is right about uh, there, where Tom has them scrub pines painted in. Nothing could grow where the cabin now stands. There's solid rock there. Oh, those pines I painted in weren't close to the base of the cliff. They were slightly in the foreground. Yeah, see, there, there's light shining through from behind them. Yes, and on either side you also have scrub pines painted in. But uh, they're much darker. Yet they're situated about the same as those in the center, Tom. Why is that? I, I don't know. But I do know I painted the scene as I saw it. Now, the sun was reflected more behind the center clump, I guess. Yeah, look, we're wasting time. Silas, I think Tom's painting gave me the answer to the puzzle. Come on, we'll meet the sheriff and go after those rustlers. But hey, don't... Hurry, we have no time to lose. After meeting the sheriff on the main trail, the Lone Ranger and Tuntle, followed by Silas Ranch Hands, led the way to the cabin near the base of the cliff. Soon they reined up in front of the cabin. Oh, so oh, so oh, Right there, big fella. Bring your men, Sheriff. Well, well, still hunting for the rustlers, gentlemen? The hunt is about ended, Professor. Come on, Sheriff. Wait! You can't force your way into my cabin like this. Step aside. No, wait. Well, now, what do we do? I may be wrong, but I think I'll find the proof of my theory behind those Indian rugs on the back wall. Stay away from those wall coverings. A good pull should bring them down. Look, a big door. I'll show you no mass storm that can do this. Oh, my hand. Charlie's gun with his hands. Man alive, did you see that wrong? I noticed the professor lost his Bostonian accent. That should prove something. That's right. I bet he ain't a professor at all. Open that door, man. There's your rustlers. Is he changing the brands on your horses, Silas? Gee, okay. let's move from him right into a beach on the other side of Rocky Mountain. The rustlers haven't noticed us yet. Have your guns ready. Come on. Hey, here! Mr. Posse! Watch them, men. Come on. Within a short time, Pierce and his small band of rustlers were overpowered and taken away by the sheriff and his posse. 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto return to the V3 ranch house with Silas. Who's there? Right there, Bill. Jim came by and told me you got the rust. We sure did, Mary. Hi, right, Dad. I guess you think I should have gone to help, but... Well, I... I guess I'll never be very good with a gun. You did your part in the capture, Tom. Gee, you said that on the way here. Just what did that Peyton tell you that made you so sure where them wrestlers went? The town's detail work and the painting was almost perfect, Silas. The professor, or that is the fake professor, said he was there six weeks. Ah, him say that. Tom painted his picture about two weeks ago on the 4th of July. According to the painting, the cabin was not there then. Gee, well, that's right. The beams of light Tom had shining behind that one clump of scrub pines indicated that there might be an opening in the cliff just behind the clump. And that I got the idea the cabin hid that opening. Well, I do declare. Then those seated hombres moved the rugs from the stone floor, led the horses through the cabin and through the opening at the back, then put the rugs back in place on the floor in the wall. That's right. The rustlers were changing your brand. To a W8 brand by adding another V and inverting the three. You see, they figured to sell them to the army, Mary. I sure was in to lose a lot of money. Well, you can thank Tom that you didn't. It was his fine painting that helped us find the rustlers. <coughs> That's your way to cry. Eh, uh, Tom Chen. Uh, guess every man has different likings, after all. So, some likes to ride and shoot, but you, well, you. You can paint all you please from now on. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. We'll be going now. Big fella. Ready, Tonto? Uh huh. Need ready. Adios. Come on, Silver. Come on, hey, hey, take it. I declare, Silas, he's sure a good friend to have. But all this time we've known him, I still don't know who he is. Well, I guess I forgot to tell you, Mary. He's the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 